India loses again and the world loses with it. Um, yes, I mean, uh, I think the scale of the victory is surprising and it's an, it's an absolute majority for a leader who is seen as incredibly authoritarian, right-wing, majoritarian violence. And I think the difference between Modi's uh, previous uh, victory in uh, 2014 and now was that in 2014 there was a semblance of talk about economic development, economic growth. Five years of Modi at the helm have not delivered that in any way. India is a shambles at every possible, in every possible way. And yet the Indian majority have voted for Modi again, and clearly not based on growth or economic development, but on majoritarianism and the promise of more violence. Well, what's interesting, Siddharth, is when we were speaking earlier, you, unlike many critics of the BJP and the uh, Modi government, you actually anticipated that he would win. I did, and it is depressing. Uh, it's depressing to have to say this, but, you know, uh, one of the things is that, again, what I've seen over the last five years in India is that although the the distress, the breakdown, the degradation is incredible. Economically, India is a shambles. The, the move that Modi introduced, something called demonetization, where just, uh, you know, a majority of banknotes, small denomination banknotes that are used by large sections of the Indian population for everyday transactions. Uh, people who work as day laborers, this is how they earn money. They don't use credit cards. He canceled this without any kind of major public announcement. It created enormous distress. It created—it's never happened in the history of Indian democracy that banknotes are suddenly non-functional. But in spite of this distress, in spite of the massive growth in unemployment, in spite of the the, the farmers, the destitution, which has led to incredible marches by farmers into major cities like Mumbai and Delhi, with bones of farmers who have killed themselves. We are talking about that kind of deprivation. In spite of that, in Modi's growth on the Indian middle class remains solid. And that is shocking, because it's not based on infrastructure anymore. And it has to do with a kind of identification with this project of Hindu majoritarianism as the answer to whatever is complicated or confusing about the world. India is following a pattern that is, uh, you know, again, you can see in the United States, that a democracy, substantive democracy, does not really exist, even in countries where you have no matter how impressive these elections might sound because of the kind of the, the kind of distorting influence of wealth. Yes, the corporations have been behind Modi for a long time. This happened right after the Gujarat massacres in 2002, when some of them initially felt a little bit, uh, you know, I think hesitant about just the scale and the, the of the brutality of the violence. But they caved in. Modi was very, very strong. Modi was very, very. Modi took them on. They caved in. The Indian Chamber of Commerce sent him a letter of apology, saying, "We are sorry that we hurt your feelings," because this is a man who cares deeply about his feelings, uh, uh, clearly. So yes, the Indian corporations, because the Indian corporations are being enriched at enormous rates. Now, India, again, as I said, it's a basket case economically, but there is massive wealth extraction going on in terms of uh, natural resources. Uh, companies like Reliance, another company called Adani, which is very, very close to Modi. So there is a kind of an incredible crony capitalism that is present in India. There is a kind of, you know, enriched that is happening at the same time as the impoverishment of the masses. The corporations pretty much, and I, I worked in India as a journalist from the mid-90s, uh, the uh, uh, mainstream media in India, television uh, is completely, uh, uh, I think Arundhati Roy famously called them Fox News on acid, uh, which is a great <laughs> phrase. Um, but that is what Indian television is. It is unwatchable because it is an unending wave of violence and denunciation again against Dalits, against Muslims, against leftists, against 
means feminist. It's this incredible, it's a kind of 24-hour rage. This is what the corporations produce. The same things to the print media. Social media is a torrent of abuse as well. So yes, the media plays, and this answers another, another question that Nermeen asked earlier about the villages. Why are people doing it? They are manipulated by the electronic media, by the print media. It's very, the, the outreach is very, very successful. And so media does manage to spin the issue so that they don't think about the questions of employment or impoverishment.